So we've talked about two components of working capital so far. Cash, accounts receivable. So now we want to talk about a third component of working capital, inventory, inventory. So if you're a retail business and you sell products on the floor space or you distribute products to other retailers or you manufacture products as a manufacturer, then you're dealing with inventory. And inventory, by the way, is probably the largest component of working capital or one of the largest components of working capital. So when you break down the components of working capital, cash, receivables, uh, accounts payable, notes payable, the current liability side, the current assets, inventory tends to be a very large component. So it warrants a lot of attention, a lot of management control to make sure that we're properly managing it. And just like other components of working capital, remember we said one of the goals of working capital management is we don't want to hold a lot of working capital. And that's also true with inventory. So one of the big challenges with inventory, now that we've got all these different inventory items that we're selling as a retail business, so one of the big challenges is how much should we actually hold? How much on stock, safety stock, should I keep on hand to make sure that the inventory item is available for the customer when he wants it? And at the same time, you don't want to hold very much because, again, one of our goals of working capital management is to minimize what we hold because it doesn't earn anything. So we want to turn the inventory over into a sale. We don't want it just to sit there and collect dust. So that's a major challenge with inventory for retail businesses. Again, it's a very large component. It warrants a lot of control, a lot of attention, a lot of management. You also have to focus on the fact that inventory may lose some of its quality. It may be damaged in shipment. It may be damaged because it fell off a of floor space. Uh, forklifts damage it on the pallets, whatever. So you have to make sure you monitor damage, inventory, spoilage. So there has to be some type of quality control practices to periodically, not just to regularly look at it. Some people and businesses that when they get the inventory before they put it in to inventory and store it, they inspect it so that you may have an inspection process before you sign off and place it in the inventory to make sure the condition is right. So you should have some quality control practices to measure your inventory. So these are some of the challenges that we have with managing inventory. And we're going to drill down into some of these other lessons and talk about some of the specific practices that we have to put in place. But one of the biggest practices is you really should have some type of automated system to track the flow and movement of every single item that you sell. So every item has to have a product ID code or some type of identification that gets tagged and swiped and updated into some type of perpetual inventory system or record system that's automated so that we can run reports, control and monitor the flow of inventory so we can see how much should we hold of specific items? Also, at what point do I need to reorder a specific product? So we're going to actually go through a lesson here in a couple of lessons where we actually calculate and figure out what is the reorder point and what, how much should we hold. We're going to try to answer many of these challenges in the next few lessons. What I want to do is just set the stage and explain to you some of the major challenges that we want to cover in the next several lessons. And in the next lesson, we're actually going to talk about something called supply chain management because the reality is when you're a retail business and you're managing inventory, you're going to deal with people who have to supply you with the inventory. So you're dealing with suppliers, vendors. You have to have relationships with those suppliers and vendors. You've got to know how their operations work. When can they fill the order? So you got to work very closely with them. And we're going to talk about something called supply chain management in the next lesson so that we have kind of an integrated approach to managing inventory. We don't want to manage inventory 
within our own silo business, we've got to branch out and really have an integrated approach within most of all of our suppliers and vendors, especially the critical ones, such as like if you run a car manufacturing plant, you're going to have to procure raw materials, steel, uh, seat belts, all the stuff that goes into the manufacture and assembly of that automobile has a lot of suppliers and vendors involved, parts dealers, so they're part of what's called a supply chain and we want to manage that supply chain so everything works nice and smoothly so we don't have a lot of hiccups. And obviously, you know, from a, an accounting financial point of view, then we would want to control the cost of inventory. So when you go out and you buy inventory, you're going to go out and buy it from a supplier or a vendor and pay them. But keep in mind, there are some additional costs that go beyond the fact that you just went out, procured and bought some inventory and wrote out a check to buy it. For example, you may have to insure the inventory. You have to have people go out and place the order to get the inventory. You have to uh, store the inventory, obviously. So there's handling costs, storage costs. So there's a lot of floor space that takes up room in your inventory. Well, that floor space is facilities. It occupies space. So you got to pay rent on that facility. You got to keep it air conditioned so the inventory doesn't spoil, things like that. So there are a lot of costs associated with actually having inventory on hand, which is one of the reasons why we want to minimize what we hold in inventory. So these are some of the challenges that you're going to face in managing inventory. And over the next several lessons, we're going to try to talk about how do we deal with controlling the inventory. For example, we'll have a lesson that talks about categorization, segmentation of the inventory so we can kind of break it out and get better control over it. We'll talk about supply chain management. We'll talk about the specific cost. And we'll go through some formulas on how to how much should we actually hold and when do we reorder. So we're going to tackle these challenges in the next several lessons.